everyone, Madeline Dell here, the Chapter Goddess. I am a mom, author, blogger, freelancer, podcaster, producer, and overall creative. With this show, I really want to focus on creatives and bring their authentic self to life. How are they motivated to pursue their passions? What have been the struggles along the way? Does self-care play an important role in who they are today and how they connect with the creative flow? Bringing one's authentic self to the forefront is important in this world that we live in currently. Sharing your self-care, your tips, and how you stay on track for things without losing it completely is also important. Self-care is not talked about enough, and authenticity and self-care are what I like to highlight with my creatives, as well as getting to know them. So get ready for a fun and entertaining show. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get ready to meet this episode's guest. This episode is sponsored today by Creative Edge Publicity. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another fantastic episode with me, Madeline Dell. Today, I have a brand new guest on the show for you guys to meet. We're going to be chatting about her work and some other fun projects, as well as life, anything that's just going on. Without further ado, let me bring them in and let them introduce themselves. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hi. <laughs> so go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I am Glenda, Glenda Benavides, and I am a singer songwriter, award winning. Um, I also am a Academy, Recording Academy voting member and been considered for a Grammy this year. And what else? I have a podcast. You know, it's it's how we all do life right now, right? <laughs> We're just trying to find our way and to be able to share our gifts and insights and really, you know, be making a difference for other people too, and to know that we're all connected. So yeah. And really like we were chatting about it before the show a little bit that we all the different hats we wear. Um what are some of the different hats you wear in your music industry? Yeah, um, well, I um, I write music to really um, elicit a response from people mm -hmm. um, in the sense of let's not only talk about topics that are relevant and that are important, um, but just to be able to take what I'm saying melodically, uh, lyrically, and be able to dive deep, not only from my expression, but to your expression and to allow people to like have whatever experience they're going to have. So that's one of the things that I do when I'm writing. Um, and then I wrote a book um, called Courage, Ignite, um, Ignite Your Fire, and um and then step into action, basically. So I can't, I'm sorry, my brain is not on today. Oh, <laughs> I'm drinking coffee in the <laughs> afternoon. <so. laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And so I, I, I kind of wrote that as a, a challenge and um, to myself because I never considered myself, oh, I can't wait to be an author. You know, like there was no rhyme or reason for that. Um, so I just thought, you know what, I wonder if I have something of value to share with people through my life. Like if I really made a difference and how does that work? And I, that kind of spurred me on. Cause I was working with a couple of girlfriends that, that were kind of like, oh, I got this problem. And they just, you know, I thought, well, have you thought about this? And I thought, okay, well, let me put that down in a book and how I did it and how I got through my issues. And, um, and then I told stories about it. And then I gave a little hand, it's like a handbook. So it's like, you can work through stuff yourself. Ooh, yeah. and, and I, you know, I just wrote it down. I did, I said, okay, what do you do? Well, let's do, uh, let's do 10 chapters. <laughs> so I did an outline and that's kind of how it started. Nice. Yeah. So did the inspiration for that kind of come from your music? 
It did actually, because um, my whole life has been music. Um, I've traveled, um, I've toured um, Asia, um, Canada, America, you know, I've, I've toured a lot and I wrote my own, I've been writing my own music since I was um, 16 and professionally singing since I was 16. So, you know, I just, you know, life happens. And so you get to have all these experiences and trials and, you know, triumphs. And so I just kind of threw it all in the book and I throw it every time in my, in one of my songs, you know, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Music is definitely like one of the best ways to speak to the soul. Um, Do you have a piece off the top of your head that you feel has been the most influential for you? I mean, I know like as artists, we kind of originally start by creating things for ourselves. Yeah. But do you have one that's like the top that you go to sometimes just to kind of revamp everything in in your mind? Yeah. Yeah. there's two that come to mind. So one, um, well, there's three actually. What <coughs> I work when it's called "We've Lost Our Way." Mm-hmm. Um, that I think that's out to somewhere online. <laughs> but um, "We've Lost Our Way." Um, then there's a soul, uh, solution. If you just really want an upbeat, I need a solution. Oh, convolution. I need a solution. I'm sorry. I'm kind of clogged. But, You're good. Um, no, that still sounds good. <laughs> <really funny. laughs> um, and I love that one. It really invigorates me and inspires me. And, and it really speaks to where I'm coming from. Um, music unity and action. And that's <clears throat> really what I'm speaking to in that song. Um, you can buy that and get that on, um, on my goddess album. So, and it's, it's super inspiring. Um, and that helps me. Um, the next one is, I think the last one that I really, that a lot of people really love, at least they've told me that, um, and it's called soul sister. Mm. And it's, it's a, it's basically, um, a love, a love note to honoring women that are loving each other and that are really inspiring each other. I love that. That and that, especially with this being like the start of March, it being at uh, the U.S. Um, National Women's Yes yeah. National yeah. Women's History Month. Yeah, <laughs> coffee. Yeah. That 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 would be that's a great song to just have out there and yeah. people to listen to. Yeah, Soul uh, Sister. It's on the Goddess Out uh, Goddess EP, and um, yeah, if you just Google it, you'll find me. It's it's yeah. on out there. Yeah, um, yeah. So back in your younger days, what led you to the path of becoming a professional musician, singer? Yeah, <clears throat> it was one of those things that, you know, when you're in grade school and they, they let, um, well, I don't know if they do that anymore, but in grade school, they let you play around with instruments and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And I decided that I wanted to play violin and I went home and told my parents and they said, Mm-mm. <laughs> they went, Mm-mm. Hey, it's too expensive to buy a violin. Right. And probably, they probably knew it would drive them mad. Um, but that year for my birthday, I got a guitar. Ooh. So that's really what started it. And I just, you know, I just naturally loved music and I naturally could sing. Um, I was one of those kids where, you know, you'd get on stage and at 10 and just belt it out there. And they were, everybody was like, wow, yes. and I was one of those. And then of course, as time goes on, you have to really um, jump into taking lessons and things. Yeah. If you want to do professional like lessons and everything, yeah, you really have to hone your craft. You can't just, you know, at least to sustain yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of how it started. And, um, and I just, I was just naturally always going into like swing choir, concert choir. Like I was just the first, yes. you know, kid to be there, you know, type of thing. And I just, I just loved it. It just kind of naturally happened. And I knew that that's what I was here to do, you know? And that's really- amazing. I yeah. honestly, I miss doing all the choir and stuff. Cause I, I did a lot yes. of that going, growing up in school, but I ended up on a different path of the creative field, but what was it like attending your first session of voice lessons? Of voice lessons. Oh my goodness. Um, was probably like oh, way so back weird. then. I, I still recall like bawling my eyes out on occasion. So. <laughs> so let me tell you the most poignant. Okay. 
um, um, a good friend of mine and also in a fabulous vocal coach. Um, I had been, I think, yeah, I had been studying with him for a while. And then I was down in Los Angeles and he said, um, I have a lesson with, um, Seth Riggs, which was his vocal coach. Yeah. And I said, Seth Riggs, he's like, yeah, that's Michael Jackson's vocal coach. Like he trains and taught everybody on tour. Like he'd be on tour with Michael and stuff like that. And he said, I can't make it. Do you want my half hour? And I'm like, Oh my God, are you kidding? I'm like, yes. I was so nervous. I, I don't, I, I wanted to pass out. Like I, I was, believe it. <laughs> unbelievable. I was there like 20 minutes early, you know, waiting and just, you know, everything was like, you know, and I think that was one of the most poignant moments for me as a, as working with a vocal coach that was extraordinary and, yeah. and that had really touched the lives of some of our most prominent artists that oh, we yeah. know and love that sing their ass off, you know? So I was like, Ooh, so that was an expensive half hour. <laughs> that was $200 back then. Yeah. yeah. Just for the half hour. That's not like ongoing lessons or, you know, anything yeah. else. You know? I can only imagine what the price of that would be like now. Now. Yeah. Man. Yeah. He's, he's the man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And it's amazing what voice coaches can do. Like they can point out things you wouldn't even like think of, especially yeah. like, more so like talking to those what, that'll be watching, like that have never done voice lessons before. Yeah. You'd be surprised how they can nitpick the crap out of <laughs> what you're doing. Yes. Well, and it, you know, I think it, you know, with, if you're, if anybody's out there looking for a vocal coach, I think it's really important to find out what it is, what kind of style that you have vocally, vocal style, and then look inside of that because you don't want to, you know, you want to be like an opera singer. So don't, you know, hire an opera coach, not to say that they don't have validity because they do, they'll have techniques oh, yeah. and things that you can use, but just really look for, and this is what I had to do. You have to really look for somebody that understands, like I said, you know, I'm doing pop R and B please, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to, please don't have me, you know, come from yeah. that place and then not know how to translate it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. into my style. So that was just my little pointer for people. If you're, you know, you decide you're going to get a vocal coach. Yeah. And the vocal like, ranges are very different for opera versus others. So. Oh yeah. Cool. I mean, you, you, there's a lot of crossover technique. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, Cause I have an amazing vocal coach now. Um, and he just, you know, he just keeps me, it's a, it's a lifelong journey. It's like, you don't just take voice lessons and it's over, you know? No. Yeah. It's like exercise. Literally. Yeah. You have to exercise your vocal cords totally. and your vocal muscles and practice them every day. Yep. So. Absolutely. And I do not now because I'm sick, but I've been yeah. sick. Yeah. Which, what does your normal practice routine look like? How to, do you yeah. start with like a warm up drill <coughs> or um i have a variety of of things that i um sessions that i do so um yeah i i just warm up with um just to kind of get everything kind of moving and mm -hmm. just kind of settle into your body you know um and then and then i go ahead and do my scales and <laughs> a variety of different things mixolydian scales i mean it's it's a variety of things yeah. so mm -hmm, yeah and it just depends on what i'm really looking for like if i'm really trying to stretch my range um i have about a four octave range right now mm -hmm. um so i sing really low and i can sing really high <laughs> yeah. but i've worked on it you know that's what i really wanted to do i wanted to one of my favorite musicians of all time is rochelle farrell and this woman has a five octave vocal range and I'm strong in all, in all areas, like, and a songwriter to beat nobody. She's amazing. Best unsung hero. Yes. That, that is impressive. Yeah. When it comes to writing your songs and your music, where do yeah. you get the inspiration for that? You know, sometimes it's when you're listening to somebody else like somebody singing a song, you kind of go, yeah, I love what they're talking about. And then you go, well, where would I go with that? Mm -hmm. You know? So sometimes it's like that. Sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's, 
it's, you know, your friend is like, um, I've had several friends that have had some trials in their relationships. And so I just wanted to write a song about that. Like, how does, how does that make you feel? You know, mm-hmm. those type of things. Um, so that that's one way. Um, and then sometimes I just pick a topic, <laughs> you know, wow. um, and, uh, and then sometimes I don't do anything at all forever, you know, like it, you feel dry, you know, so you got to kind of got to do other things. So like, I'll, I'll get involved in like, like I've, I've got my tarot cards, you know, and then and you get inspired by tarot and then you, you just move to like, you know, writing in your journal and then talking about how you're feeling or what you're going on, you know, there's seasons and there's, there's yeah. time frames, right. Of different yeah. things. So that's kind of it. Creative seasons kind of change yeah. refresh yeah. the creativity. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. When you get in the zone with the idea, do you kind of go on a crazy binge? Like I've got to get this all out. Sometimes. Ooh, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I, I can walk away from it and just come back later or whatever. It's um there is no formula to songwriting. They have yeah. there's there's some rules. But there's no formula. I like it. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the other outside influences um, that you've come across that have affected your work? Um, well, like I was just saying, um, Rochelle Farrell, um, as far as a vocalist and a songwriter, she's just an extraordinary human being all the way around holistically. Um, Prince is one of those guys, um, of course. He's one of those shooting stars that that came in and showed everybody how to be be creative and say no and be yourself and you know there are no rules kind of thing follow the rules there are no rules you know kind of human being and um yeah completely dysfunctional when it comes to other things but when it, when you look at the overall realm of artistic who that being was, he was art, you know, mm-hmm. he was artistic and he was the prince of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and he knew it and he knew he just went for it. I, phenomenal human being. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and then kind of like old classics. I love Sarah Vaughn, uh, Dakota Staten, George Shearing, like the old jazz guys, you know, there's so many, so many influences, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. Are- good artists for sure you know Um, people like buddy guy and things like that i mean just like the old blues guys robert johnson you know yeah yes such good let's talk about your latest release walking where did that idea come from (laughs) walking my way down I sold my soul for my big bright lights, and I signed my name, Lord, and it didn't feel so. It started with me going, wow, everybody gets, uh, I can't got to think of a kind word. Um, <laughs> everybody is allowed on the show. So feel free. <laughs> that's, where it goes. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Um, um, let's just put it this way. Um, all of us and artists in particular, because I'm going to say that I wrote this from a mu- musician artist standpoint of us getting ripped off in the music industry. Um, so that's really where it came from and how it's you get very seduced by, oh, I'm going to get a record deal or, oh, you know, they they love me or they're, they're going to take care of me or whatever. Or I don't have to do that. You know, that type of energy that we all have as artists, what happens is that those that are not of a higher realm, let's just put it that way, um, that have 
promises um, and some business acumen, they can come in and take advantage of you. And so I, I wanted to just kind of for for fun, just show this um, person, which is myself, obviously, um, take getting signing the contract, saying, "Oh, I'm so excited! I'm you know I'm getting this yeah. this record deal. I'm signing my life away." You know, and then you come to find out that you've actually been ripped off, like you've been you've been taken advantage of, or yeah. you know it wasn't what you thought you were going to get, and you basically sold your soul to the devil. And yeah. that was my kind of take on the take on the story. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and I thought, you know, how's that for other people? I mean, everybody, I think at some point, and you probably know this, Madeline, um, you stepped into something that you thought was amazing, wonderful, super excited. They taught, they promised the world. And then all of a sudden, no. And then you find yourself, your bank account is empty. (laughs) Yeah. Or you're like in such a mental hellhole that you're like, I have no idea how to dig myself out of this. Yes. Oh, man. Exactly. A lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to write the song. Yeah. I used myself and music as a, as a, you know, um, cause everybody can relate to that. Oh, she yeah. went the contract and now she went to hell, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's more, I feel like it's more common these days. And now with social media being bigger, people are starting to call others out on it. And yeah. I, I love it. But at the same time, it's terrifying how much it's happened. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Right. Yeah. And then and you, you'd like, you're looking at the playing field and the playing field's wonderful because it gives people like you and me an opportunity to connect and talk and share and give our gifts. And that's amazing. And then you have on the other side of the coin, then you have sharks out there looking yeah. at, Hey, I can help you with that. <sighs> For four ninety nine, that's 499. You know what I mean? Things yeah. like that. Oh my God, you know. New. So I think of the sharks and (laughs) how do you keep them at bay with what you do? Like my hands, I'm pushing them. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, I, you know, a couple of things because I've been ripped off a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. because it's hard because you want to keep your heart open and you want to trust people. Um, I what I've found is I follow my intuition. And if it looks too good. It might be, and you also need to do the research. So if someone's trying to sell you some social media marketing or whatever, fine, ask them questions, make them show you what they can do, make them prove to you based on results with their name on it, make sure that they can prove that, make sure that if they're asking for money, that they go through like a Fiverr or some somewhere that's actually been credited a little bit, at least they've been, yeah. they've had to jump through a few hoops, um, where you could ask for your money back. That's the key. Not just don't, you know, do a cash app and then you're, you're screwed. Um, you know, things like that. And then just, you know, again, um, educate yourself. If somebody comes across to you and you, you're like, oh, I'm really excited about this. This sounds really good. Look them up, see if they're real, see if there's anything about them or whatever. And then also, um, do the research. Like, what is it that you need to know? about it. Don't just throw it in their pile and then wonder if, you know, if it's going to work out or if you're going to get the numbers that you think you're going to get. Um, just, just look around, ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. The research is huge. Yes. It's it's time consuming, but a hundred percent worth it. Worth it. Oh, take that time utilize that. I actually, I attended the speakers boot camp over the weekend and that was something they kept reiterating. Do your research on anything like you're going to get involved in, like play it safe. hundred percent. You just, you said it. And that's, and that's the truth. (laughs) And the, and the fake ones, they go away really quickly because yeah, they can't, they can't prove it or they can't show up with the right documentation. I've, I, I've been so surprised at so many people that hit you up on IG Oh my gosh. Um, right? yes. And it looks good. And they've got a diatribe in there. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And I'm like, where's your website? Where's yes. your, you know, what, who you're going, who are you going through? Like what company, you know? Um, and if they can't, you know, I'm like, well, why would I employ you? Why would I hire you? If I, you're just somebody on IG somewhere, 
<laughs> you know, it's like, I'm, yeah, I'm going to give you my cash app or, or Venmo or something to like, what? No. Yeah. No, I am. So like, if they don't have a website, I question, I'm like, are you even a real person? Like right. come on, if you're offering things like this and you don't have a website, yeah, mm, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. Cut you off right there. Like don't bother me again. So, yeah. Um, I'm curious about the processes compared, like comparing writing the book to creating your music. How, what are some of the differences and similarities there? Yeah. Um, Well, with the book, um, it was an experiment. So Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know how to write a book. I didn't know, you know, I barely read one. No. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know, I, I did an, I do an out, I did an outline. It just came to me. I just, oh, she's probably do an outline like chapter by chapter. Like, what are you trying to say? And how, how are you leading people down that path? Yeah. Now that similarly with music is that the same thing. It's like, you got verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, possibly. Um, and then where are you leading people? You mm-hmm. know, um, that's a really great question, actually, Madeline. Um, because I never really thought about it until now, but yeah. it's really true though. You have to kind of, um, you have your structure and it's like, well, what do you want to say inside of that structure? Where are you taking people, Mm -hmm. you know, and why, why are you taking them there? You know, what are you trying to say? Um, so that's that, those are kind of the similarities, um, but, but completely different, obviously, because more in depth, you know, you're writing deeper stuff. So hopefully. (laughs) Yeah. And how do you determine the tone for your music? Um, That's like another curious. I know part of it comes from the words you've written down on paper, but when it comes to actually belting it and putting it out there, do you stay within a certain octave? Do you maintain, like, do you plug in sharps and flats and stuff to keep the music with the tone? You know how I look at it? I approach it from this place first. I go, what is it that the song wants to say? It sounds really esoteric because it kind of is. And as an artist, and you probably know this, Madeline, you have to listen deeply. So a lot of times I'll take a a theme or a mood and I'll say, I want to lyrically write something like that. And then I'll put it in a form and I'll write it, get it all out there, go back, look at it and go, okay, are we, am I really telling the story? Does it make sense? Um, get rid of the and, get rid of the the, or whatever, you know, (laughs) does it make sense? And then um, I'll say, I'll say that. And then I'll, I'm working, I have a partner that I work with, um, Gene Williams. He's also a mastering engineer and he's a great guitar player. And and we've been working together for last 10 years now. Wow. Just seems so fast. Um, Yeah. Crazy. And, um, you know, we've been, like, so like sometimes he'll send me just music mm-hmm. and then I have to listen to the music and go, what is it saying? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then I, I look through my lyrics and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. That fits that. And then I have to like design a melody, a rhythmic something, whatever I'm going to do right inside mm-hmm. of that. And then, then you get all kinds of other ideas. Like with walking, it starts out with, um, um, <clears throat> when we, recorded it um I went oh no the intro has to be you have to feel like you're in the south in the summer with the you know with the crickets and things like that you're hearing and then thunder you know and you can just good old southern storms right so people up right yeah yeah that's amazing and it's a beautiful process like yeah yeah it's, it's it's different each song will tell you you know, it'll tell you, oh, no, that's that's too long or that's too short. Or, you know, you got to flavor that with something, you know, like soundscape it somehow, you know. Yeah. yeah. And it's so amazing that you get to do that because it's such a fun, fun thing, honestly. And I know some of the viewers are probably like, what are we talking about? <laughs> but you guys research it if you if you have questions on this. We, I have a little bit of a background in music growing up. I did a bo- bunch of like pop kind of music going and competing and play the piano and stuff so it's like this stuff just kind of like I know this and my mom kind of hovered on the 
ver- verge of doing professional um, music, but she ended up not doing it because she found out she was pregnant. So <laughs> and she was like, oh, okay, not for me. Um, but another thing I'm curious about is what is something you know now that you wish you had known back at the beginning of your journey? Oh my God. So, <laughs> <laughs> ah, if I had, you know, ah, the knowledge I have now, um, I would have done a lot of things probably differently. Um, um, I would say <clears throat> because I didn't grow up in LA and I didn't grow up in a music family or a film family or whatever, you know, when you have those advantages and you're always circling around those people and then the music people on that level are circling around you. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, let's use Johnny Depp as an example, right? He he's came to town as a musician, but he's now, you know, as a, a filmmaker, you know, um, yeah. an actor, right. Um, <clears throat> back to music now. But um, so I would say, you know, I did it on my own. I did everything on my own. And, mm-hmm. and and there was levels and layers. And now that I look back, I mean, I don't regret any of it just because I'm a deeper human being that that has um, a talent and abilities that can really sub- help people. <clears throat> um, but I think as as a, um, a younger person, I should have followed that that in insight about why don't you just move to LA? And then I, I, I probably would have fast tracked a lot of things, but then I probably would have missed out on um, e- the evolution of my spirit. Oh yeah. And yeah. That's almost more important than just like yeah. getting it, you know? It is. And I think we're really moving into a time now where that attitude and that way of being is honored. Oh, yeah. More so than just, you know, superficial music that you can just dance to and throw away because it's a real throwaway society here in the U.S., you know, not so much in Europe, but um, Europe, they have a whole different, I mean, I've played there in Europe and, and they have a whole different way of focusing and paying attention and really enjoying art and music that yeah. we don't have here. We're just, if it's not young, if it's not this, throw it away, do it, go, 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 superficial, superficial, superficial. You know? oh, yeah, that is one of the things I dislike about our culture because there's yes. so many beautiful things out there from right. paintings to music to books. And it's just, yes, yeah. you want to immerse yourself in that. And there's so much you can learn and take away from that. And that's it, right. And think deeply. And that's where, that's where freedom comes in mm-hmm. and self-empowerment. And that's kind of what my book talks about. Clarity, courage confidence, commitment, and community. How do we get there? Yeah. You know, how do we get there? Well, we get there because we go deep. We go into ourselves. We find out who we are. We find out, we start with the clarity. That clarity is, who am I? Mm -hmm. Why am I here? What am I here to do? You know, it's, you're not here to just party, you know? Yeah. Those are the moments where you feel like you want to. Um, yeah. You should. I mean, you should express and, you know, follow the trail of a journey. <laughs> but, you know, if once you, if you get yourself lost, you know, and you find yourself, I don't know where I'm at at 20 and I feel depressed and I want to kill somebody, you know, or kill myself, or you're a woman that's in her 40s and her kids are gone and she doesn't know who she is. Yes. Right? Man. Yeah. yeah. It's like, whoa. Yeah, it's I get it. It's hard, but you have to really build a foundation. And I think that's one of the things that I get to share and get to help people with too, with my music and with my book and just my performances and stuff like that, to be able to spotlight those things and then and then invite women and men, whoever, you know, I'm mostly yeah. for women, but step into like, well, let's let's discover that like who is that you know yeah who, who am I what's next and it's all different every nobody's just one thing one person for the rest of your life no we are constantly evolving and adapting and that sounds very healing too yeah. so <coughs> man. 
<laughs> life and with everything like the world that a little cough is okay it's not <laughs> COVID. so <Yeah. laughs> um what does success look like to you with having such a long ride in this field I know it's probably changed over the years but what does your current form of success look like yeah that is really a great question because it has changed. <laughs> um, where I am now is success to me is if I have touched somebody with the work that I've done and it's helped them, it's inspired them, it's, it's have them thought, think deeper, deeply, excuse me, um, or had their life feel invigorated or happy or joyful or insightful. Um, to me, that I feel like that's success. And yes, there's there's monetary aspects of that that we all have, you know, especially as women, where we're we're building our business. You know, this is our this is my business, this is your business, and we're building and we're we're contributing at the same time. So mm-hmm. I think that to me is success. It's not about, oh, did I get the right record deal or am I famous now? Um, Honestly, (laughs) we were just, a few of us were just discussing that the other day about that, you know, and downside to uh, younger people when they do get a deal or whatever, um, or some kind of what we consider in the Western world success, um, which means a higher visibility or whatever. It's, easy to lose yourself. It's easy to not grow. It's, you know, because it is business. So they will work you and you will work Gosh. and you will work so much that you won't have time to look at who you are. Nope. You can't go, Oh, let's take a break so I can get some therapy. <laughs> you know, oh. I'm going to, I'm going to work, do some shadow work. I want to see what, you know, what's going on. Why can't I get a breakthrough in that? You know, or why do I feel this way? Or why do I feel insecure? Why, you know, he's like, no, you gotta, gotta get up. We gotta go. We gotta perform, <laughs> you know, yeah. so to I me, I, I'm looking at success now in, in that way that, that my life is successful no matter what. That's great. And breaking out of that go, go, go mentality is yeah. a challenge in and of itself. Like I feel as if we're all like, or said that as kids and it just keeps coming as we age yeah. and breaking out of that is the one of the most difficult challenge especially in our society because it's, right. I guess like the western culture thing for America like here yeah, absolutely. all of this uh, yeah. um, which also makes me want to ask do you have a self-care routine I always like to bring this up in my shows because yeah. It's a, we, I focus on bringing the authentic side of you out, but self-care is important, especially like we mentioned with all the crap that's going on with our society. Yeah, no. And it's, I think it's key, especially nowadays. And, and, and the more that we get busy or we have children or we have um, full lives or whatever, it's really important. I feel like at, 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 in every everyone to each his own, but managing your time is key. So time management <laughs> is key. And inside of time management, then you can do self-care and you add self-care in like, just like we do as entrepreneurs, you add, you add money in to pay yourself, mm-hmm. um, which a lot of us don't, especially as women, we don't pay ourselves. We don't take time. We everyone else's needs comes first. And yes, if you have kids that that's the point, I mean, they need your intention and inspiration and guidance. Otherwise, why are you having them? So I get that. And I start my day personally. Sometimes it's more challenging. I don't have children, but, um, I, um, that was a conscious choice for me because I knew I was taking on a career you know, like this at 16. And I realized that, um, I had a great mom and I, I loved, I loved, you know, being, I, I saw that children need to be loved and taken care of. And, and I thought, you know, that would be, I would be doing a disservice if I did that. So for me, um, I get to have self-care <laughs> and it's still challenging. And my self-care starts out, um, in the morning where, <coughs> excuse me, I try not to, I try not to schedule myself too much with early morning because I know me and I, I don't really think well. Um, 
And um, I do a meditation. I, I try to stretch and do yoga and I for sure do a two mile walk every day. Um, I take Sunday off, but um, and just lays around and let my mind just do nothing. Um, and, and which is challenging because as we all know, these lovely units are fun. Um, yes. Ah, yes. <laughs> addictions <laughs> in my body. Um, so yeah, so that's, I definitely have a self-care routine for sure, for sure. Even now, especially as I'm getting older, I, you have to really be on top of it because, you know, I'm not going to be 80 and, you know, be in a wheelchair. So um, <laughs> I'm just Talk determined. Wood, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yes. But you know, you can, you can ward off all that too. I mean, you really can with exercise and, you know, I work my mind and, mm -hmm. and I <clears throat> work my spirit. So. And that is important to that. It's like preventative care in a way. Awesome. Yeah, true. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. What are some of the hobbies that you have that help you kind of, I know hobbies can be used as a form of self-care too, but what are some of the hobbies you've got? Mm. Well, let's see. That's a really good question. I have hobbies of the past. <laughs> I was, um, some of, I used to play with the SCA and then mm -hmm. Society for Creative Anachronisms. Um, it's medieval reenactment, basically. Ooh, that's, that's fun. Cool. It's really cool. Yeah. And then you can, you can pick a character and you can just, you can, you know, but, you know, you have to really develop it and you kind of show up and, and it's like a medieval encampment when you're there. It's really fun. You get to wear clothes and it's just very fun. Um, and I fence. Um, I fenced for Willamette University for a year or so. Um, and I love that. Um, what else? Gosh, I'm so boring right now. I think I've just mainly been my my love and self-care has been my business and and preparing for a tour that we're gonna do this summer Ooh. in Scotland. So Ooh, yeah. even better Scotland. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited and, and, you know, more things need to be recorded and, you know, it's like all kinds of fun stuff. And I'm working with the recording Academy, you know, I'm right now I'm, I'm a, a, a mentor for a uh, Grammy university. So I'm, I'm doing some of that and that's, that's insightful and, you know, supporting community and I give back, you know, one of my main things is I plant trees. Yes. So, oh, yeah. yes. So there's a, a wonderful company called One Tree Planted and I work with them. And what I do is I okay. I promote that if you buy a, my single, Walk In, or any of my other songs or my book, I will plant a tree for you. Mm. And so far I planted a hundred trees this year. So that is amazing. And I've actually heard of that charity because there is another eco-friendly company that I like to purchase from that's like here you can for every dollar you spend, a tree is planted and you can yeah. donate extra to your order to have trees planted. I'm like, yes, yeah. this is my kind of shop. So, yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've got a, a other I found out through other musicians that were uh, not there was a I, th I think it was a musician. Um my partner, he, um, he's, he's a mastering engineer and he has what he does. So every time you master something with him, he, he plants a tree, um, which is really cool. And he, he got that idea from somebody else. I, I, one of his, his people, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> but that is amazing. Tying yeah. charities into that. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, when did you make the decision to like coordinate with them, um, by selling your product? Um, pretty easy. What I, you just go on, um, line and then, uh, I think you go into the affiliate program or something. I'm not sure. Um, I just, I just decided I was going to do it. And then, um, you, I can't remember what I did, but it's pretty easy process. Yeah. You, can, I mean, you can download all their, um, um, marketing promotional thing, and then you mix it with yours and then you just, you just do that. And then I, I, when people do that, I send them back an email with, um, a confirmation that they act, that I actually did that. So it just doesn't go into the ethers. So I'm like, well, I don't know. I hope I planted a tree. Um, so yeah. So I, so I let them know and, you know, thank them, of course. That is amazing. I love that like completely. Um, so you mentioned you're getting ready to go on tour mm -hmm. in Scotland, right? Yep. 
what does that process look like? What are some of the things you have to prepare beforehand? Oh my God. Um, <clears throat> what isn't there? Um, <laughs> well, first of all, I have a management company. So mm-hmm. they're, um, they've done all the um, visas and that kind of thing. And they'll settle all that. And then um, we're going to, we're submitted for the fringe festival in Scotland. It's really neat. If you ever want to go to something fun for a month, that is fun. There's music, there's act, there's shows, there's, and it's all fringe. So it's not like you're not going to go see cats or something. (laughs) You know, you're going to see real artists doing real things. Um, Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. And they have comedy and they have all kinds of stuff. Um, Anyway, so we're submitted to that. Fingers crossed we get that. Um, and then uh, I think we're going to take off from there because um, um, I because I, we're we're pitching me to a booking a management I mean excuse me a music booking agent because um, mm-hmm. that gets you more gigs kind of thing so that's part of what we're doing um, and then um, so, so what else did you say I was leaning down a path like what it what kind of what prepare for yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's part of his, his job. Um, my job is to make sure that my songs are, um, down in order. They sound good. Um, we, I'm kind of do this tech. Um, so I have a thing called, um, the Helicon, um, TC Helicon. And what happens is that you can upload your tracks to this, this thing. And then, it sends it through there. You can send it to the board and then, then it has your effects and stuff like that. So I always sound good. Not like, Oh, I showed up to some club and they don't know what they're doing and the vocals are dry or there's tons of crappy reverb or something on it. Anyway. Um, so you can kind of control your sound. Um, so I got to do that and you put that together. Um, and then just keep marketing about where we're at, what we're doing. Um, and then I'm, my manager will set up, interviews and that type of thing when publicists will do that too you know him um creative yeah. publishing yeah so um yeah so they'll they'll do that and we'll target we'll target that a little more focused when we get to that so it'll be like please don't have me talk to asian company when i'm really i'm going to be in scotland um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Whole, yeah wow. there's so much like that i'm only that's the icing on what yeah. needs to happen but that you know, I can share you <laughs> share you with you off the like gloss over of like all the intricate stuff because I know anything like that that's that big is going to have intricacies that's <laughs> like oh well, it's not going to make sense to just the general population. So you know, and it, whether you're doing a you know an arena or you're doing a club, there's still a fair amount of things that you have to prepare for. Yeah, and you you know everyone should have a writer. You should be really clear about what you want, what you need. Um, Cause I have done some crazy things where you end up, you know, like, what was I thinking? You know, this is horrible. You know, I'm being treated like a, a slave, you know, <laughs> it's like, there's so many of those, you know, I, I played Las Vegas once for about a, about a year. And I swear to God, I, we came to this club and I had no idea. They wanted us to do ready for this. They want us to play seven sets. That's seven 45 minutes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 15 minutes off. And I looked at him and I said, I am not a cocktail waitress. No. I'm what, a inner, do inner. they want you to not have a voice at the end of the day? I mean, come on. 45 minutes alone is a lot. Yes. Ooh. And I was, I'm the, I'm the lead singer. So <laughs> yeah. that's a big thing. Uh-huh. And so what I, what I did, what I ended up saying was, I'm sorry, you guys will play the first two hours without me. And then I will come in in the last five sets, five hours, because I can sing five hours. I mean, you know, I don't know about now. I don't need to sing five hours now, but, um, you know, a good 45 minute set is pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Um, Plus people don't have that, you know, that's, that's a whole nother world anyway that I was talking about, but man, yeah, pretty crazy, huh? That makes my throat hurt. Yeah, yeah. Thinking about it, like I know. Oh, good lord! Now you know why vocal lessons are very key. Exactly, and keeping your voice and vocal cords in shape. That's right, and being quiet, and keep you know, don't drink, don't do drugs. Don't, yes, no, you can't. 
do you gargle salt water and stuff? I know this was, that was what they used to tell me to do before. Um, no. anytime I sing and stuff, like make sure you gargle your salt water, drink lots of water. Like, yeah. Ooh. No. Um, the best thing to do is keep your throat warm. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't do a lot of talking. If you're going to go perform, right. Give yourself, you know, be quiet. Um, make sure you warm up of course. And then, um, drink like warm water mm-hmm. or, uh, or drink, um, there's a, 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 a tea called throat coat. Ooh. It's really soothing. It's really nice. It has anise in it. Um, and it also has, there's a licorice, there's a liquor, um, there's a root. Um, and I learned this from a sax player once when I was overseas. I go, what are you sucking on? Cause it looked like he had a cigar in his mouth oh. and it's like a tree branch. It's a little stick and it's, yeah. um, yeah, it's um, and it's great. It's great for blood sugar. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And it's also very soothing on the throat. Um, so yeah, so just you know, do what works for you. You can like experiment, you mm-hmm. know, and then you'll realize, oh man, that did not work, you know, uh, you know. Um, but just be gentle is mainly the thing, and get lessons, and you know, breathe properly through your nose, out your mouth. And, you know, you'll get more power that way too. um, holding, um, a note. If you yeah. breathe through your mouth, through your nose, out through your mouth. If you breathe through your mouth, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a diaphragmatic. I think I said that right. Breathing. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. Oh man. Um, final question. If you could share. Well, I guess you kind of did that already. <laughs> you can share another piece of advice with somebody starting a journey as an artist and creative in your field. What kind of advice would you share with them? I would say find a mentor and stay focused on who you are, what you want to share and why. And don't get caught up in the lies and the hype. Um, and just be really clear and stay on your path, stay on your journey and get yourself a mentor um, and do research, like really find out who's out there, who who inspires you and have the courage, courage to find the fire, um, <laughs> have the courage to ask them to help. Like, for example, yesterday, I've been after this woman, I'm in the, like I said, I was in the recording academy. I'm an active voting member. So I get to vote on who wins what, which is fabulous. I love that. Um, And there's another woman in the recording Academy. She's also a mentor and she's amazing. She has a record, um, um, a recording studio here in in the Northern Bay area here in California. Um, And I bugged her (laughs) gently (laughs) And we finally met yesterday and I got to go in the studio and her, I met her husband. He's a a mixing, mixing engineer. They have 19 Grammys. 19. Wow. I'm like, no, I need to know this woman and I need to know why they have that and how they got that. And you know, those things. And so do that, you know, she's going to be my mentor you know, and, yeah. and also somebody that's on a, a similar playing field. And they were so lovely. They sat there and they talked with me for, you know, he stopped me- mixing. I thought, Oh my God, I'm in the middle of his mix. Um, and they, they gen generously sat with me for two hours and just answered questions. We just communed. They were cool. We took pictures, you know, they were so lovely. Um, 19 Grammys. I mean, it was beautiful. I was like, I'm going to touch that. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it's funny because we talked about that too. We talked about, you know, it's not Grammy for Grammy's sake, but you know, what it is, is it, it acknowledges you as an artist. It acknowledges that you've come to a level of your expertise in your master, masterful life. Um, and it also says your, your community is acknowledging you for that. So, you know, and it opens doors. Yeah. Hands down. So anyway, that's, that's my, my two cents. Wow. That is, that's just like mind blowing. Well, Glenda, go ahead and tell our listeners and viewers where they can find you and some of, the, of your, your work. 
Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, everything is on my site pretty much. I mean, you can actually, you just Google my name and you'll find me everywhere. Glenda Benavides, and it's spelled Glenda, G-L-E-N-D-A-B-E-N-E-V-I-D-E-S.com. Um, and you can start there. You can, um, look at my music videos. You can look at the, buy my music, um, my book, everything is on there and all my goddess work too, if you're interested in that. But, um, again, if you, if you purchase anything, a single, my walk in single, whatever, um, yeah, just, you know, I will plant a tree for you. And of course, like everybody else, if you like, and subscribe, um, <laughs> That moves the needle forward for all artists. So, yes, and come and listen to this interview um, if you didn't have time, because I'm going to have Madeline's interview up on my website too. So, yes, and yes. definitely, guys, hit that like and subscribe button. Show her some love and mm. leave us some comments. Definitely go grab some of her stuff and plant those trees for sure. Yes. Um, Linda, once again, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you, Madeline. It's a great birthday gift. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to get future notifications when shows come out. Also, be sure to check out my website. I have a blog featuring this creative with some other fun and interesting questions. You can also subscribe to my newsletter there to stay up to date with all things The Chapter Goddess and Madeline Dale. Once again, thanks for watching and have a great rest of the day.